and there we go i'm recording okay so welcome everybody this is crypto fuel and today we're going number four ama with elephant money now elephant money if you don't know what it is i don't know where you've been for the last months and years so elephant money i did few videos and i started i believe was june yeah sorry uh four three four months ago we did ama and the price by then was 0. 0, 0, whatever, one, two, one, three. And the price today is 3x since I start mentioning a, uh, elephant money. And I did a video, what's called, I did the stupid mistakes. I sold 70% of my BTC for elephant money. And from then till today, uh, even paying my tax, I just double my money. And Bitcoin, uh, if I still hold the Bitcoin, I was going to be minus 20%. So that's crazy. Okay. That's hundred percent gains. Uh, also with, uh, including the tax in and out. So I can sell now half and I can play with bank money, but I'm not selling yet. Not yet. So also I did a couple of videos how elephant money outperform every single token from top 100. And I compare all pretty much seven, eight on the video. And I compare a lot before the video. And I, I, I can just say elephant money is going banana. And I think when uh, supply show going to start, I think it's going to be banana on steroids. Okay. So that's will be my video when that started. So banana on steroids, don't, don't st style, uh, 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 don't take my title. Okay. So here we have uh, SK crypto who is well supported for elephant money. And he was the one who, how to say, give me encouragement to ape into elephant money. And basically you are the reason why I'm all in, not all in, but I'm heavy into elephant money. Okay. So please, we did uh, one AMA number one, explaining futures and, uh, and elephant money, how it's all working. Go and watch that was three months ago, but it's still the same work, how it's working. And then we did number two, part two, how explaining the, uh, the rest of the full ecosystem. Now, uh, SK Crypto, thank you so much for coming and thank you for everybody who are here and who are listening now. Thank you so much. If you have any question, ask anytime. SK, feel free to. Sh By the way, congratulations, you become a dad and welcome to the family of parenting and forget the sleeping for the next 20 years. Uh, okay, so <laughs> go ahead, my friend, and uh, start and share wherever you want, and then I will ask a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, no, um, Crypto Phil, thanks for having me here, brother. And, you know, I think that the style for this AMA isn't going to be, you know, similar format, guys. So I, I see we've got Thor, God, Ed, Jed, Stu. I would love to hear from you guys as well. Feel free to jump on in, um, you know, stop me at anything that, you know, we're talking about. Um, but yeah, yeah, Crypto Phil, man, bro, thank you, dude. It's It's awesome because I remember... Um, you know, your original story too, like you had, you, you'd first got into elephant, uh, pre, uh, exploit. Right. And, uh, then after, you know, the stuff happened, you know, you're busy, you're paying attention to a lot of different protocols. You're worried about your community and you kind of checked out. Right. And then, um, you know, it, it took some, some persistence and some, you know, DMs starting, I think maybe in November, I started to get back in your, your DMs and, uh, you know, slowly just started to show you the updates, right? And then once once you finally like like hooked yourself back in, I mean, that's that's the story of so many people, man. Um, you know, and that's the narrative for really any project that goes through a, a battle test like that. Um, they just assume it's done, right? Um, but that's one of the best things about Elephant. It's it's you know it's back, right? And the recipe for why we went parabolic the first time is back again. And uh, and now you get to reap the reward of that. I mean, I don't know who else sold, you know, some of or a majority of their Bitcoin or blue chips to even jump into Elephant. But, bruh, smart move, smart move. And, um, you know, the numbers don't lie. So even right now on my screen share, I have Coin Codex pulled up. And these are some of the highlights right here where, um, you know, just in the last 12 months, bro, like 244% up year over year. What is Bitcoin? Only like 30%. Um, even though in 2022, we've outperformed all 100% of the top 100 cryptos in 2022, despite the exploit, here we are in 2023. Look at that. 97% over 
uh, the top 100 cryptos. So, you know, by the end of this year, uh, I've called it, but I, I, I'm thinking that by the end of this year, we're going to be at 100% again. That's going to be two years back to back on top. Watch the throne. All right. Or as Bailey from the EMA, shout out, brother, bend the knee. You know what I'm saying? Like th this is a, an absolute powerhouse of a protocol. And it's just so exciting to see, you know, how it's, how it's unfolded. And, um, let me show you the Dune analytics. I think one of the last times we talked, Phil, uh, we were still talking about the upcoming flippening event. Remember that when um, the LPs in blue right here, you know, as we buy it and as Bertha buys it, these LPs drain down, 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 down. And then Bertha in red is going up, up. And, you know, before when we last talked, they I don't think they had flipped yet, man. It was just one of those things we were just, you know, saying we're on the trajectory to do. But now here we are with the update. It's finally done it, bro. And look, sure enough, the red and the blue crossed. And then what happened with the price? It's it's just going parabolic and it's following all the same trajectory of the last time this happened when the red and the blue crossed. You know, we started cresting up the elbow of this hockey stick right before we went straight vertical and that's what you're witnessing right now. This is still just the elbow, people. This is still just the elbow of that hockey stick, right? Um, soon enough, we're going to be vertical. And even though we're growing at, what, 1% or, or more per day on price appreciation, what happens when that's 2% a day and 3% a day and 5% a day and 10% a day? And every time you open up your elephant bag, you're going to see more money. It's going to be insane guys i'm so excited for you because I, I don't know how many he were here for the first parabola but those 30 days i remember i'll never forget them those 30 days were pure bliss and it was fantastic and bt knows he cracked the code and now <laughs> here we are again the recipe is back so um Yo, man, I see Native Lube joined in here too man yeah this is an open forum guys please jump in i'm gonna pause right there uh, for any questions or if someone wants to, to hop on. Okay, let's start with my question, then we can uh, uh, get all the questions. So, okay, so SK, so yes, so last time when we spoke was just before the crossing. Well, it was like months before the crossing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm just trying. Uh, I'm just trying to find my. Um, basically, I'm going in my YouTube just to see when was my first. Uh, uh, elephant money uh, video, uh, and I think was there we go uh, May. All right, so that was in May. Okay, beginning of May. All right, so so I just imagine I mentioned and I start buying from May. All right. Oh wow, May. dude, that's that's 12, right here on the chart. Yeah, you see this? Yeah, tw this is beginning. Twelfth of, of May. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it was twelfth of May. So that's when we start chatting all right so look how much time i have and i know the price was around zero zero uh, whatever zeros and uh, one two when i start buying and then i ape around one four one four five with when i sold my bts and i say freak it you know by the way whatever we're talking here guys and girls whoever is listening nothing here is financial advice do your research your money your issues or problems okay so questions number one all right can you please tell me how many contracts are because last time we mentioned there are 41 now i think i know there are more and the liquidity people want to know what's the total liquidity because and also if you can pull up the uh, bsc scan for the people to see what is number one in the uh, uh, bnb uh, holding in the liquidity so that's the first couple of questions yeah, yeah, absolutely. And those are some good updates right there, too. So first up, we'll look at the, the BSC scan. Um, actually, yeah, 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 this is fine. So remember, when it comes to Elephant Token, anybody who's new, there are two LPs, uh, Elephant paired with BNB or WBNB and Elephant paired with BUSD. And specifically for the wrapped BNB, you know, um, we are the second holder. We are the second holder. And I believe last time we talked, Phil, uh, we were probably, we're still in the top 10, but I feel like we were either eight or nine uh, at that time, back in May and June for the follow-up AMAs. 
and we've we've just climbed, you know, and right now we're sitting at over 90,000 BNB tokens inside of this LV. Um, and, you know, soon enough, we're going to be number one. Like, that, that is a huge achievement. Can you imagine what the community is going to be doing to celebrate when our BNB pair is literally the top pair on chain? And once we I, hold that throne, we don't let it go? Oh, man. I think uh, last time when we spoke was, so it was May 12th. That's exactly, exactly a uh, hundred days ago 100 days ago so we have may to june 30 days june to july july to august so around 120 days four months time all right so oh, in four man. months time i think we we double the liquidity we double so about christmas time we're going to be the shining star on the tree we're going to be that that the top star on the christmas tree in the crypto space okay uh, i can just yeah. imagine i think uh, that's what you show, 90,000 BNB, and the price is so cheap now, BNB. Uh, I hope this stupid SEC stop going through, <laughs> I guess, BNB, because uh, I hate it. They're just trying to destroy them. Um, okay, so next question. So that was for that. Uh, and uh, yeah. you can explain more uh, for the liquidity for BUSD. Yeah, yeah, I'll jump in there too. So um, I didn't pull it up, but on BUSD, we are number six, last I checked. Actually, I should probably check that again because we might be number five for all I know. But um, yeah, it's just to even be top 10 on um, top BUSD on chain, you know, at number six, that's that's incredible uh, in and of itself, you know. And um, let's see, okay, got it. Holders right here, where we at? We are number six. We are number six, 16, almost 17 million uh, BUSD. And um, soon enough, over time, we'll probably catch this five or four, or I don't know, in the future, um, you know, BT's future proofing us away from stable. So we may actually uh, move away from BUSD and go to a different stable or just Bitcoin. I, I don't know. I'm not going to speak on that behalf, but he's alluded to it in some of his uh, voice notes in the main telegram, but still very impressive. And we're just going to transfer this liquidity elsewhere. Um, but it's, as far as total liquidity, when you combine the BUSD and the BNB pairs, you're looking at 72 million, 72 million in lock liquidity. That is absolutely monstrous. Um, and then in addition to that, Elephant Treasury Bertha has really grown since the last time we, we spoke uh, gosh, back in May. Back in May, this was probably around 20. 20 or 24 million dollars, right? And then now birth is up to uh, 58 million dollars. That is that is just insane, you know. Um, That's crazy. That mm -hmm. is crazy. Okay, okay. So we got the liquidity there. So that's good. Uh, do you remember my other questions for the ask? Because I forgot them. I forgot to, man. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. The liquidity was important. If anybody remember, please remind us. Okay. Yeah, hey, jump in, guys. Jump in. Yeah, jump in. Ask all the questions. Okay, so next question. Okay. Hey, I've got a comment and a question. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, CC. man. Go ahead. Yeah. What's hey, up? hey. This is CC Crypto Man, and I want to make two quick comments. First off, um, I discovered you, Crypto Phil, through SK. Uh, he and I have been friends. Thank and you. I I have just so enjoyed getting to uh, getting to you know see your character. I've been almost two years um, in DeFi, and let me tell you, you are you know you're a shining light on a hill. You are you are a, just a great guy. Your personality just jumps out through the screen, through the distance between you know geographically. And I just want to honor you for that for what you're doing because. You know, I believe, uh, and I know a lot of people, we believe crypto is is world changing. It's very important um, to to the future. And a lot of people who um, don't have a chance in finance because of where they live, uh, the countries they live in, uh, I believe that decentralized finance is going to, going to be a, a big change. So thank you for what you're doing. So that's... One comment I want to make. That's very, uh, that's very nice. 
I didn't expect well, that. Thank you. I'll definitely tell Santa. Very, yeah, absolutely. It it really makes a difference for those of us who, you know, I've been through some some garbage as we all have, and the fact that we found elephant money has has totally given us a belief in why we started in crypto <laughs> because everything else has just fallen by the wayside. Part of it is because of how good the protocol is, but the other part of it is how great the uh, community is. And I quote you in, 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 in like even my videos, how you said the, the, the chat is not toxic. The chat is so healthy. It's such a positive place. I started getting into the chat and I started recognizing some names and I was like, Oh wow, Mike Dre and you know, Thor God Ed. And next thing you know, these guys are befriending me and me in. Now I have a friendship circle, you know, SK and the, how he is as a, as a genuine friend to all of us. That makes such a massive difference in the protocol itself and how we're all pulling together, how we're all teaching each other. Uh, it, it's, it's incredible. And, you know, with the exploit, BT himself calls it his Superman 2 moment. He now chalks it up as the best thing that actually could have happened to the protocol because he made it better. It was something that, that forced him to dive in and make it better. So on all levels, we can just see uh, the brilliance. We can see the, the passion the the work ethic that bt has and then the kind of people who are attracted to helping to spread the word uh it just gives us so much to go on so that's my comment i'll keep it brief because i also have a question i know the answer to the question but here's a question <laughs> for people who are listening who might be new to this and here's the question that they may be asking why are you so confident that this price is just going to keep going up. What are you basing this on? Thanks, guys. I'll let you answer that. Wow. Hey, uh, um, amazing commentary there. CC Crypto Man, my brother. And also, I see BT <laughs> joined. Welcome, dude. Um, uh, Phil, do you, do you, with everything you've learned, Phil, you want to take a stab at that question? Man, I think, uh, by the way, BT, welcome. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to have you here. But we have the BT that's a bank teller, the guy who invented this crazy crypto, uh, I will say, uh, changing machine life world, whatever you call it. By the way, BT, he, he wasn't here, but I call now the uh, elephant money going banana. But when the parabola is going to start very, very soon, hopefully in the next few months, we're going to call it banana on steroids. Um uh, to answer that question, I think, well, that's more you, buddy. Uh, you know everything. <laughs> but if you combine all the futures, the NFT, how all the protocol work together. And, oh, by the way, the question from earlier was for the contracts. Now they are over, I think, 50 contracts they are who work oh, yeah, all over together. 50. Yeah, over 50 contracts yeah. now. Yeah, so all that stuff, if you combine together and how the protocol is working, I think it's all explained on the first eight, one and two AMAs. That's what triggered me to sell 70% of, of my BTCs. So if you want to explain shortcut for the new people, it will be also great. Yeah, absolutely. I'll take a stab at it and uh, feel free, anybody. Again, this isn't my AMA. This is the community surprise AMA. So jump in. But, um, you know, CC's question about, you know, I guess why, why I'm so confident that uh, this is going to repeat history um, you know, it really comes together with all of the Dune analytics that uh, Daedalus, shout out Cohen, um, has put together. Uh, but, you know, we really have a beat on everything that's been happening in this protocol pre and post exploit. Like all the blockchain data is right here at your tips. If you don't want to look even just at the treasuries here, you can look at the NFTs, the farm, Stampede, Trumpet, like every every part of the ecosystem has its own dune analytics and you can do your own research if you took the time it's incredible but um you know i just love to see uh you know these charts with the treasuries i think you know before this one came out right here that actually had the lps you know with bertha and then the price um before i saw this one ever pop up this is the one i used to go around and, and show people and um, I think in blue on this is the value of Bertha. And um, 
you know, as as the blue Bertha size was going up, her value in red was shooting up too. And I remember back when the right half of this chart post exploit, you know, just just looked completely different. And now you can see the similarities of what's happening. It's just an elongated version. Um, but you know, essentially, I think that the fact Bank Teller has created the the best business model out there, um, especially on chain, but in the world. And, you know, when you look at Elephant Money like a business, it has something that everybody wants. You know, it's uh, similar to McDonald's. Like you go to McDonald's and you love their hamburgers, but not everybody loves hamburgers. So guess what? You can still go to McDonald's and get a McFlurry or you can go there and get a fish sandwich or chicken nuggets. You know what I'm saying? So like if uh, if the hamburger here is the elephant token, well, you know, you don't like that. You can just dip your toes in the futures, all right? That's going to be money coming into that, going into Bertha. Um, if you don't like the futures fish sandwich, you can go over to the NFTs, right, and get your desserts and apple pies. Uh, that There's something here for everybody, right? And the efficiency of all that money coming in is what, you know, drives its way over into Bertha. And when Bertha gets those funds, when her token count goes up, right, her value, you know, she has a multiplicative effect on everything. So she can pay out all the liabilities. But um, you have an incredibly efficient model here. Uh, Crypto Stu, shout out, he put this together. But just look since last June, where the yellow token count for Bertha has been um, steadily going up. And here today, we're at 105% growth on just the token count alone. But look in the same time frame. What did the value of Bertha do? He's up 777%. I remember the day that futures launched right here, Bertha was valued at $9 million, $9 million, okay? And then now we already saw just a second ago, she's valued at $58 million. Everything that you're seeing on the blockchain data is real. And so, um, you know, I attribute the future success of this uh, protocol um, to looking to the past, really, and seeing how... You know, we are squeezing the supply out of the 1,000 trillion. We already know half of that is uh, locked away in the graveyard right here. Shout out, Stu. He made this as well. And the other remaining 500 trillion tokens are, you know, split up between the participants, Bertha, and the LPs. And over time, not only with the taxes collected on your elephant token, but the incoming money, remember, that's coming through into the future and through NFTs, eventually when Trunk's back online and people are minting that, it's going to just keep draining the LPs and keep Bertha growing. So I'm going to play this graphic, um, uh, CryptoPhil. I don't know if you've, you've seen this one or maybe this is an updated version, but this is starting at May of last year. And just look at the breakdown happening on the 500 trillion that's available. Look at how the LPs in yellow are going to shrink. Look at how Bertha's going to grow. Look at that, look at that, look at that. That is insane, right? And Bertha being that number one whale, or sorry, number two whale, but the dynamic one that doesn't um, um, shrink in size, the bigger she gets, the, the, the more protocol-owned liquidity is in the hands uh, for elephant money bet between the graveyard and Bertha. And so we already did that one flippening where Bertha is now uh, larger than the combined size of the LPs, you know, and then the next flipping, it's not too far from now, actually. But uh, look at how close Bertha is getting to the next flipping, where Bertha will now be bigger than the participant size. So, um, yeah, I think that's a that's a over that's a generalized answer of why I feel this is uh, this is the truth. Okay, just perfect. I have three questions from a member. Uh, I just shared through the main chat. If you can just. If I can read for you, if you can check them, they're just perfectly for Bert and Graveyard uh, questions. So if you can check them, please. Um, who does it start with? I'm scrolling up now. I, I, I just posed them like a second ago. Oh, okay. Questions for AMA. Number one, do you remember the daily trading volume during the last parabola and how long it took for Graveyard rebalance? Oh, um. I don't remember the uh, someone else can jump in, but I'm sure it was hundreds of thousands on on a daily basis. And remember, at that time, buy with Bertha did not exist. You know, you could not get, you could not buy or sell for eight and a half percent tax if you have an upline partner. Uh, at that time, everything was ten percent in and out. So half of those taxes rebalance, or I'm sorry, 
having those taxes uh, reflected into every holder's account, including the graveyard. And um, there was one event where I should probably just save that image. I always go to my medium here, but there was one a gigantic red candle whenever uh, we were going parabolic last time. And that was when um, the graveyard actually rebalanced in the middle of the parabola and the community just ate that thing up so quickly, so quickly. Look, here's the image right here. So this is during um, March of last year. And we were clearly in the parabola right there. And this one red token, or sorry, red candlestick right here, this was the graveyard rebalance. This was a, a 5 trillion token sell, um, which then paired with the remaining 5 trillion tokens for lock liquidity. So yeah, that's question number one. Um, could you please explain the difference between graveyard and Bertha? I know Bertha is the treasury, but what is graveyard's main part in the protocol? Um, so the graveyard is just a, a liquidity and price strengthening uh, event, okay? It is a loop. So if the graveyard always, always holds 50% and through reflections over time, um, she grows from 50% to 51%, that is a total balance of 10 trillion tokens. Okay, and then 5 trillion tokens are sold on the chart as shown right here, and then paired with the remaining 5 trillion, okay? And um, once that's paired together, then it lands right here in the, in the BNB LP. So um, it's just a liquidity strengthening event, and it hardens the price floor for Elephant Token. And um, that's the point of the graveyard. Now, what's the difference between the graveyard and Bertha? Well, the graveyard is, is stuck in a bubble. It's playing ping pong between 50 and 51%, right? It can never go above 51%. But Bertha, Bertha, she don't care. <laughs> Bertha is that, she, she is the dynamic whale. She's number two in line behind the graveyard, but her whole mission is just to gobble as many tokens as possible. And she's that friendly whale on the system that doesn't uh, dump the, the price on you. Because remember all the analogies she doesn't drive a beat up car. She doesn't have to pay for maintenance on it. She doesn't have to pay for her kids. You know, she just is a selfless whale that just keeps on trucking and, and, and eating and growing and holding that price floor up, right? It's like the car jack analogy. Shout out to DeFi Springs, my brother. Um, he said that on one of his live streams one night and it just resonated so well with me. And, uh, you know, the car jack, uh, you know, it acts like a backstop. On the price, the price dips but doesn't dump. You know what I'm saying? So that's the difference between Graveyard and Bertha. Question number three: Will it be a single sell-off during Graveyard rebalance, or will it be parts? Now, no, that's an easy one. Single sell-off: ten trillion tokens accumulated between fifty and fifty-one percent, and then that's a ten trillion token difference. Five trillion sold on the chart, all in one go. This is a community monitored event, so you're going to see people like really hyping up the chat, like, "Oh my gosh, hey." You know, it's at 50.9%. You know, uh, Graveyard's about to rebalance. Get your BNB ready. Because that otherwise is really the only dip that you can find. Um, and will get eaten up within a day <laughs> uh, on an otherwise evergreen chart. So pretty crazy. Okay, amazing. Thank you for answering. Okay, so a couple of heavy questions. Okay, so oh, before we go to the heavy questions... Uh, can you tell me, uh, I know uh, I was listening some of the AMA this morning, but I didn't catch fully. It was f two days ago, I believe. And I know uh, uh, beat uh, Bank Teller ape in there and he was driving, he was saying. So he went to a couple of uh, um, events, correct? And he spoke with serious people there who have a huge uh, community under them. I'm talking about millions of followers, as I understand, thousands and thousands and thousands. And they're not very familiar with the DeFi. So can you tell me more about that? Like, uh, I know we know BT's docs and, and Link. You can see his links and everything, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, can you tell me more about if BT want to ape? Great. If not, you can give me more uh, information on like how long the BT has been working for this protocol. Uh, how long is his experience? Uh, uh, just for the people have more information about uh, the the guy who who... who uh, uh, make this happen, this this amazing thing to, to, to be alive here in, in, for all, all of us to take a big part. Oh, yeah. I mean, that might be a question better suited for the founder himself. I don't know, BT, you're able to speak. 
I mean, I'll give my version if you don't want to talk. Yeah, give me a second. Uh, give me give me a quick second. Okay, okay. So um, to answer the first part of your question, Phil, he was uh, recently at um, Invest Fest over in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, that is a, a convention where there are um, well-connected people in, in, in business, you know, entrepreneurs and, and, and crypto blockchain lovers. Um, you know, there's high profile people that uh, BT got to have, you know, break bread with and talk with and network with. And he's just, you know, planting seeds, guys. Like, you know, he always says this, but it's chestnut checkers. And, you know, he's not going there to be like, hey, you know, uh, here's your next 100x meme coin, blah, blah, blah. No, he's he's just showing the facts, the figures, the numbers saying, okay, pretty soon we're going to be post recovery when Trunk's back at peg, yada, yada, you know, get your boys ready, like get your groups ready, get your businesses ready, like plug into this ecosystem, because this is the best financial vehicle ever created. Um, so yeah, he did a lot of networking most recently at that event, you can find in the pin messages on elephant telegram, um, you know, image with people that he uh, uh, was taking selfies with and stuff. And uh, and yeah, so that's really cool. And in regards to whenever he jumps in, but he'll tell you too, you know, he's a, a computer scientist from, from MIT and then from there has over 25 years of experience in um, traditional uh, finance and business, a CTO at Fidelity, um, has experience with FinTech and State Street. It's, it's just in crazy. It's incredible the pedigree that this guy has and for him to be using his talents for the last six years in DeFi across what um ethereum chain tron chain and now the uh, binance blockchain um you know he's just lending his talents to that and he's going to cement his legacy as having created the best financial vehicle in the world and you know those six years were were arduous they were they were painstaking. Not everything was a success, you know, and every, every, everything that he's worked on the last six years, whether it had exploits or just tokenomics that failed or succeeded, elephant money is the culmination of all of those years of experience from things that he's built and that others have copied and just what he's also learned in DeFi. And he's channeled all of that that knowledge and experience into what is now Elephant Money. And Elephant Money even had its own uh, gut punch a year and four months ago. And here we are thriving and we're about to take over. I think BT used an analogy recently where he says, we are the best bucket, the best bucket in DeFi. And you pour water in and it do not leak, you know? So yeah, it's incredible. Hopefully BT, you can speak uh, more to, to your background. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's tons of AMAs out there, you know, talking about the background. But basically, you got the Tony Stark of DeFi, you know, working for you for free. So um, all the evidence is in the liquidity. <laughs> you, know, you, know, uh, you know, I'm not here to keep on constantly hyping myself up. You know, everybody knows who Iron Man is. Like, you don't have to get... We don't have to go into that all the time. It's more about getting the job done at this point. And the difference between Iron Man and what we got here for Elephant Money is that you get to wear the suit. Everybody gets to wear the suit. Everybody gets to use all the toys. You know, it's not just one guy using the toys. So, you know, this is built. You know, everybody has a Tesla, right? So, um, or can get one. So, like the idea here is is that we move forward, each one teach one. Um, and uh, in regards to what happened at uh, Earn Your uh, Earn Your Leisure Invest Fest, um, basically, you know, I met I met, I met a lot of good people there, uh, people with a lot of reach, a lot of influence, a lot of you know direct touch to dollars, um, and. Uh, that's just going to continue the steady stream of adoption that you see. You know, when the chart goes up, that's people DCA. When the chart goes up, those people making their first uh, deposit into futures or the NFTs. When the chart goes up, that's them building up their bag of elephants. That's what that is. It's the steady stream of adoption. The most important thing is the herd being active. That's what's uh, the most important thing. If you have people 
that you text on a regular basis, not Telegram, but texting in your phone or people that you call on your phone, you know, family members, friends, you know, close associates. If those people aren't an elephant, those are the people that need to be an elephant. Those are the people that you need to take some time, get them onboarded, and so that we can move forward. That's that's what needs to get done. You know, spend all your time up in Telegram or in various Telegrams and stuff like that. That's important, but make sure you get the people that are close to you too, because if everyone in the herd was doing that, we would be growing geometrically. Beyond that, you know, if you do know people with social influence on social media, uh, if you follow them, if you value their opinion, you know, maybe the thing you want to ask them is, especially if they're in the DeFi space, the crypto space, hey, how come you're not covering Elephant? How come we haven't heard about Elephant? You know, go go to uh, CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap. We, we want Elephant to be properly listed. Those are the types of things that we need now. Uh, more than ever, more than ever. And if if you haven't seen the right, and finally, if you haven't seen the writing on the wall, the next bull run is coming. This one will be a fundamentals based bull run. It'll be based on uh, institutional money coming into Bitcoin. Um, you know, people might have been disheartened by the actions taken by our current. Uh, um, president in his administration and the SEC in the United States. But, you know, would you see the, when you see the rulings coming down in uh, the courts, right, and you see other activities that play, other, even some um, other uh, agencies that gives faith in America, right? That's, that gives, you, you know, there's a reason why, you know, a lot of innovations in the world come out of America. That is why, you know, you know, so, so, uh, you know, the thing, uh, the ruling that just got passed in the Southern District, New York City, um, uh, what was the judge named Fallas, I think was her name. Uh, but basically, you know, DeFi is DeFi. It's software running on the internet. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's running with zero warranty, zero liability. You executed, you executed that transaction. You decided to participate in this network. That ruling for Uniswap, you know, because they were trying to get Uniswap because they were hosting a scam coin. Well, you decided to interact with that scam coin on Uniswap. I've often used Uniswap as, and Uniswap liquidity pool providers, those are, um, that that's like a, a first example of financial cooperative, a, a complete financial cooperative. You have people who providing, uh, putting up the liquidity and you have people who are willing to swap against that liquidity and that forms a whole community, right? So there it is, Uniswap, Uniswap V2. That's the first model of an on-chain, fi a complete financial cooperative, complete two-sided marketplace. And then you have elephant money as another example of that thing. It's just a little bit more complex. It just has a little bit more moving pieces. But that's it. It's it's just another piece of software that's running and you can draw all the same analogies. Uniswap was still still had to be written by a team, still had to be written by a person. Uniswap still has to be supported by an organization. It still has to have website and domains that have to be kept up to date. It still has to have has to, still has to have people going to conferences. It still has a leader. But the software itself, if you choose to use it, it's at your own risk and at your and at your own gain. And that is an important milestone in the history of cryptocurrency and DeFi. And that's one of the rulings that we're going to lean on to protect ourselves. In addition, Elephant Money at the time of release uh, was uh, a fair launch. Not only a fair launch, it was a liquidity drive event. Everyone who, who participated went in with the expectation of not profit, but of loss. Without, without the expectation of 
of, of profit based on the work of others? No, there was no roadmap. There was no promise of anything that you see in Elephant Money today um, other than just the token itself. And just the token itself existed for the better part of a year before any additional development was even done. So there you go, not a security. Elephant is just a, a commodity running on the Binance Smart Chain. And, and in that commodities ecosystem, we are one of the largest holders of BNB on chain. So these are this is this is this is how all this has come about very organically over not just two years, but six years in DeFi across multiple protocols and blockchains on Ethereum, Tron, and BNB. So that's pretty much it. It's in the hands of the community. Uh, we are very close to feature complete, but the work is not done, right? Uniswap, for example, you can trade tokens on Uniswap. You can create tokens, add liquidity. We all know what Uniswap does. Now they support NFTs. So, you know, it's growing very organically. It has its spot in the marketplace. Elephant, similarly, has its spot in the marketplace. We know what it does. That's not to say that it won't do other things in the future. It still needs to be maintained. It still needs to be socialized. It still needs to be supported. You know, browsers change, uh, wallets change, you know, um, opportunities like InvestFest are always happening. There needs to be people. I call it wetware. There needs to be wetware that's installed in place doing what it's doing. Everybody who's listening to this call right now, you're the current iteration of that wetware being part of this complete network that involves not just people, but blockchain code and the blockchain itself. Right? But we're all just moving forward in time, offering value, hopefully for generations to come. That's all I got to say. Nice. I nice, nice. I like that. I, I want to share something with all of you special uh bank teller and sk and every lover of uh of the, uh, of, the of your community i did this one right uh so check this out i will just forward now i did this one uh just for the elephant money all right so i just shared this one it's 10 seconds so please uh feel free to to watch so that's me on the video right uh, this is in Prague, in in, uh, in in Czech Republic, right? I was there last week. So I find an elephant and a shirt. <laughs> just watch later. Just watch later. It's pretty cool. 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, ben Turner, that was amazing. I will listen. I didn't know we can participate because that was the biggest question. Why uh, CoinMarketCap and, 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 uh, and CoinGecko is like, what's, what's, the, what's the issue? Why we are not listed? So... Uh, to help that we can all take participant so we can all send them like hey guys listen this is the beast you need to be aware of it you know just put it how we're supposed to go you know in the top uh, 100 correct so okay so let's we can all help there i, I can do a separate video for that just to be just to make uh, a public aware uh, my other question what i have from four members uh, they asked pretty much the same question different questions but uh, but the same uh, meaning so the question questions were are you a little bit afraid for, uh, I know, SK, you, you start this one on the beginning. Are you, are, uh, what do you think about BUSD and BNB? Because it's a lot of, you know, FUD and all that stuff. Are you afraid in case BUSD go down, unpeg and all that stuff? Or uh, BNB going downhill, is it going to hurt? Uh, are you thinking to go to different, uh, changing the liquidity to different stables or different, not BNB to maybe BTC, Ethereum, wherever? Any answer on that? Uh, whoever wants to answer SK or, or BT. So this was from four or five people. Yeah. I just post I just posted an official statement from Binance and from us on that topic. But basically oh, okay. what the deal is is that um, uh, it's going to always be redeemed at a dollar. There's always going to be support for it uh, on chain. No, the, the difference is, is that Binance is basically going to stop liquidity from being able to flow onto BNB chain. 
So one of the ways that it's going to do it is it's going to, you'll no longer be able to um, be able to withdraw to BUSD on all of the different EVM chains. So the, the flow of BUSD from Binance to, um, to those chains is going to stop. But that doesn't mean that um, that doesn't mean that other participants on all of the blockchains are going to drop support for BUSD. BUSD is going to exist um, on all those chains. So the, the current liquidity across all chains is going to exist. Like so if you have bridges that support BUSD. D, those those bridges have smart contracts, treasury contracts that hold the BUSD. Um, and when you when you exchange from one, when when you not just bridge tokens, but if you do a swap internally, you know it's going to uh, pull that BUSD, BUSD out, put it into circulation on the various chains. So BUSD will gracefully sunset. It will always be used in certain pockets. It will always back liquidity. You know, where, where it's stuck in liquidity pools, it'll just stay stuck there. And if you took that BSG out, there's always going to be a place on chain, probably on BNB chain only, where you'll be able to swap it for a, a dollar easily. But it's, it's going to exist. Um, like, like, like all tokens, whether they're successful or not, exist and it and this one won't go to zero because there always is going to be a redemption mechanism provided by uh binance to 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 redeem for a dollar and that's what they said that's what they said specifically uh that it will always be redeem be, be redeemable for a dollar um they said that specifically uh in their uh press release That's amazing. That's amazing. BT, last question. How are you, my man? I know everybody asking you elephant money, but how are you? How is life? How is everything? Uh, I'm just trying to pace myself, work, uh, and, and get this work done. Uh, going into the fall, changing gears. Um, you know, so, you know, summer's over and it's going to be sort of, life's going to feel a little different. And, um, yeah, that's it. So, so uh, again, thank you so much for, for jumping in. And guys, if anybody has question, so uh, SK is here, Bank Teller is here, the big guy, uh, second big guy SK, third big guy me. Uh, <laughs> so we have any <laughs> question? We have Torgot here. Uh, at, yeah. So anybody have any question? Feel free to ask. Uh, my questions are pretty much gone. I think I will have a lot of questions, but I don't want to just, I think the main stuff were answered to me, okay? Uh, and you know, that we touched the liquidity, we touched the, the futures, we touched the elephant money, how it's working. We didn't mention anything for NFT. And also guys, do you, do you have anything working in the pipeline? Again, because I, I know Bank Teller never sleep. I heard that a lot, like he's always busy, like, like, do you have anything working again in something in the future to 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 be developed more to be add in the ecosystem or this is for now and and yeah any roadmap basically. I mean, this this is software, right? So um, you know, for 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 as many people own an Android or an iPhone, uh, there's little small changes, little details, re rewording of the user interface, re small redesigns of the user interface. Um, those types of activities happen on the blockchain as well. We have, you know, a large percentage of those governance contracts just make the whole protocol sing and, and, and make magic happen on the blockchain. Um, those have to go through revisions. We're going to have to go through um, a fairly, I wouldn't call it major, but substantial revision to accommodate these changes with BUSD. We have to accommodate these changes in BUSD. We have to accommodate changes that we've observed, you know, based on, you know, over two years worth of usage of the platform. You know, there's there's some um, things that we can change 
Um, like for example, with our arbitration system, um, or should we be arbit should we be doing arbitrage at all? You know, do we need do we need to have stable coins as an essential part of our ecosystem going forward? You know, we understand that we have a handle on cash accounting. We have a handle on uh, on chain oracles and twaps and things like that. We don't we can you know can we can we um, exchange value in in dollar value track that value right uh, award yield in dollar value but not <clears throat> hold stable coins at all. Those are the things that um, we uh, have to take care of and basically to get. We want to basically get um, elephant money 100% to anti-fragile, you know. So elephant elephant runs in a in an anti-fragile state right now. Until I hate to say it this way, but just to keep things as simple as possible, until assholes get in the way. What I mean by that? So basically, um, you know, somebody, some 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 unelected official says that BUSD needs to get shut down after, you know, uh, Binance makes it available with Paxos and then a whole, and then the, then the whole DeFi community adopts it. And then a single person can make a decision that we shouldn't be using BUSD, even though it's, it's, it's no more special or less special than USDC or PYUSD or whatever other branded solution that comes out the gate uh, in the future. So we, n now we have to respond. And if there wasn't a, a develop, if there wasn't developers, you know, primarily myself, but if there weren't developers there to fix those things, then we're stuck. Now we know certain things are just not going to go away. Like the blockchain itself is not going to go away. B and B is not going to go away. So those are the sort of uh, a pancake swap's not going away. So the, those are the anti-fragile aspects of the system. And so we just have to weed out all of the things that could go uh, wrong. And primarily uh, from what I see, uh, the weak, the soft spot in all of this is the stable coins, is the regulated stable coins. Frankly, I think it's any stable coin project is not managed by the platform itself. So Trunk, so Trunk will be that de facto stablecoin in the future that we depend on. And I think that all other stablecoins are going the hell away. Okay, fair, uh, fair point. I think I do agree with that. I think that's a fair point. Um, okay, crazy, crazy. Do you know what I'm, what I'm scared? I'm scared that every day when I wake up, I see the uh, elephant money price going up i see this is like is this like normal is this okay and next day i wake up and the price is up again and i say and and then the bitcoin crash uh seven percent in a day and elephant money stay one percent up i say what the heck like how is this possible like what did you create what monster you create right here and Berta just getting fat and fat you know we love that i think yeah um and uh to be honest yeah and i'm so happy and grateful for I will never forget, like, SK, I spoke with him and he said, listen, brother, uh, I, because I told him, look, man, I'm, like, spreading my money here, 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 here. He said, listen, I stopped doing that a long time ago. I only put in elephant money. I say, but why? You know, just diversify because I love, you know, going everywhere. And he says, listen, I was aping everywhere and I was making video and then I was losing, make some money, lose, 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 make some money, lose. And then... In the last three, four months, when I started aping in elephant money, in every other protocol, almost, almost all of them are done, gone, or some of them survive and doing okay, you know, and doing well, one or two of them, but all the rest of them, seven, eight, nine of us, they're all gone, disappeared, you know, and elephant money just pumped 100%. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> like Christmas, every day is Christmas here. Yeah, dude, it's incredible, man. And, and even our earliest DMs, Crypto Phil, I remember you just like, nope, I checked out. Nope, I already tried elephant money. Nope, not interested. Nope. And then that persistence, man, and our friendship, you know, just runs deeper than that. And then you finally, yeah, when we really started to talk and 
um, and then you started to get a handle of everything, you see why I stopped uh, covering other uh, projects. You see why I stopped doing any of that, right? And the realization was was always there, staring at me in the face. Had all my money literally just gone into Elephant, I'd be way ahead of even where I'm at today. And, um, you know, it's just that that financial vehicle, the best one we've ever seen. And uh, the one that we can actually trust is is watertight now, especially after the, the stress test that we've already had. You know, uh, what, what better thing could you ask for than an already tested protocol and uh, one that's uh, performing numbers like the, it is today? Yeah, crypto Phil, man, <laughs> it's so awesome. You're back. Yeah, uh, and also, uh, I'll just go and mention the guy who joined earlier, CCC uh, Crypto Man. And he, you know, he mentioned how I, in one of my videos, I did say, uh, listen, one of the best community I ever saw and the most positive, you know, uh, no toxic, no bullshit. It's elephant money community, you know, and I have a couple of other community who enjoy being there, you know, enjoy to talk, to chat, to, to say whatever you want, you know, and, and nobody going to attack you or, or, or make you feel like shit show or ban you, you know, just go there and just boom, ban your gun, you know, so, so, so that's impressive. And the community is growing up more and more and more. So, so that's even better. I can see this. Uh, I don't know, man. I think uh, Christmas will be much e early for all of us. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. E even right after the gut punch a year ago, man, the, uh, you know, initial phase of, of FUD and whatnot. But, man, shout out to Jed as well, the admin over at Elephant. But, you know, he was a constant voice every day, just like banging the drum of Elephant. Like, guys, it's fine. Administratively, the contract's fine. Like, we're building, we're doing this, da 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 you know, and um, yeah, so he was always a voice of reason in there. And I'd chime in where I could or make a video if I could. And uh, yeah, man, we it's just stayed positive. Thor got Ed as well, man, they really held that down and, and really fostered the, the type of community that you see today. There is no tribalism, there is no toxicity, there is no um, beating, you know, other uh, protocols down to the ground. It's just it's just positivity and education. And that's all it is. It's good vibes all day. And that's what I love about the community. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, it's Stu. Go ahead. Hey, buddy. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah go Stu, ahead. Stu, what's up? How's it going? Good, man. I've got a question for you, SK. Are, are, are you actually human? You know, having just had a new baby and all these AMAs that you're doing, it's pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> Uh, yes, man, I'm actually a humid. It's it's crazy. You know, the same question could be asked to BT, you know, during the yeah. 10 months post exploit, him just grinding away. But yeah, hey, we, as community members and, and you too, Stu, you're doing such a fabulous job and all that hard work you put in, man. But collectively, when you piece together every cog of this machine, all of the Avengers banding together, like we literally have the best community, the best protocol, the best content creators out there. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a testament to, to all of us. So, so you know. Yeah, I think out. so. I mean, I, 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 when you were talking there about the strength of the community, I think, it, um, you know, when that exploit happened, uh, BT got his head down, BT got to work, he didn't give up. But the the a large part of the community also did the same. It gave everyone an opportunity to actually take a step back and really understand what was going on underneath the hood. And that gives, you know, when you, when you do understand um, the elephant money ecosystem, when you understand how it all works and how all the pieces of the puzzle fit together and how it strengthens the liquidity and the treasury grows and the impact that that has on supply and demand, it just gives you this huge amount of confidence to be able to go out there and spread the message, you know, because I, I truly believe that elephant money is our best chance at a cash flow for all system. And and I understand that it can be difficult for people who are maybe new coming into the system to have that same level of confidence. And as BT has said, you know, a number of times, the most important metric that he tracks is, you know, the number of participants, the number of users, because adoption is really, really key in order for us to take us to the next level. Um, I, and 
I certainly feel 100% confident in recommending and encouraging friends, family, acquaintances into elephant money. And I feel that that is because of the amount of time that I have spent learning how it all works together. And, you know, there's a huge amount of confidence that comes from that. And everyone who is new to the community has the opportunity to develop that level of understanding if they want to. There, there's so much documentation out there. The, the wiki, you know, is, is an absolutely fantastic resource for anyone to who's new to the, or who's, who's investigating elephant money or has invested in it already, go into the wiki, ask the, you know, AI, chat GPT style uh, AI uh, lens function within the wiki, ask it any question you want and it's going to give you an answer. Uh, w keep up with the AMAs that you're, you know, you're doing SK and BT's been jumping on more recently as well. And thanks to Crypto Phil for hosting this one. There's just such a wealth of information out there. Um, you know, there, there really isn't anything else that excites me in this space at the moment other than elephant money. Um, and I'll leave you with a, a little a analogy that I, I, I got from Mike Dre, you know, another uh, really important member of the community yesterday, because I think there a lot of people still don't j really understand how products like futures um, can be sustainable. And I don't know if you would be kind enough, SK, to pop up that chart that you had earlier on with the, the token growth versus the treasury uh, value. Um, the one with the not that not the pie chart, right but the, that one there. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it comes down to what Mike called it was whale economics. Yeah. So Bertha uh, is the a mega whale, and so the slightest increase in price in the elephant token is magnified significantly in the value in the treasury, and the treasury's liabilities are either dollar denominated, so they're, you know, they're fixed, they're known, or they scale with the treasury itself. You know, like NF NFTs pay 1% of the, the treasury value, 1% APR. Um, and so if you want to think about this in, in something that might be more relatable to, you know, average Joe out there, you know, think about another whale. Think about Elon Musk. So he owns, you know, this huge... 13% of Tesla uh, shares, which is, what, $108 billion, according to Mike. And if Tesla price increases by 1%, which is $2 per share, that actually increases Elon's net worth by a $1 billion. And that is what is happening with the Treasury. Her value, she's just capturing, she's hoovering up so much of that value that it means she's got no issues in paying out any of those uh, liabilities and, and debts. And if people can really understand that concept, I think it will give confidence to get out there and spread the word. So I just wanted to jump on and say thanks for all the effort with the AMAs. Thanks, Phil, for hosting. Thanks to BT for all your work in, in bringing this protocol to us. Wow. Yeah, beautiful, man. Thank you so much, Stu. Yeah, uh, just to just to piggyback yeah, off of what he, yeah, um, that multiplicative effect that Stu just alluded to with Elon Musk and that analogy, right? So with Elon Musk holding such a lion share, uh, Bertha is like our Elon Musk, and all any little bit of price appreciation that comes into the protocol. This is uh, done by Bailey at the EMH YouTube channel. But for example, when we have a price per million here of zero point two zero four five zero three, and I put the dot above the three. After a $100 injection comes in, look at how the price actually appreciates. 0 0.204506. See how the three turned into a six. And when you spread that price appreciation out across Bertha's token count, and at the time of this, I think this was uh, back on July 19th, um, 153.6 trillion tokens. When you spread that price appreciation out across that, she has a treasury value gain of nearly $500. Look at that. She turned $100 into $500, of which she's hodling. And just as Crypto Stu said, you know, some of the liabilities from futures, for example, or 
um, you know, th- those are dollar uh, represented. So whenever someone's owed, I don't know, $10,000 out of futures, well, Bertha, who harnessed all this economic energy, she only has to sell over time less tokens to give out that same expected dollar value. And that's evident by Crypto to, uh, Stu's chart right here. You know, as time goes on, remember back when futures came out, Bertha was only 9 million. She had to sell more tokens back then to give out yield than she has to today. Now she's at nearly $60 million. That means she gets to sell less elephant tokens to pay out that yield. So yeah, great analogy, Stu. Fantastic, man. And and I agree with you, man, the, the testament to the community and how we banded together. I mean, I don't know if y'all feel it, but it, it really feels like something shifted, right? These last couple of months, something's really shifted. And you've got a lot of people that are joining this ecosystem that have never thought about joining it before. They they swore it off. You know, Crypto Phil is actually a good, a good testament to that. And um, now you got all these people coming in. I, I see here, I don't know if he's still listening. I know he can't speak, but Eternal Crypto Optimist is one of my uh, longest running crypto friends. You know, I, I kind of look up to him like a big brother. And he he's now full in on Elephant. And I wish he could speak and, and give his account of things, but um, to have him here, that's smart money, okay? And he's a well-connected whale with other people. So um, Eternal, just wanted to give you a shout out, man. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. And um, yeah, but talking about, before I give up the mic, sorry, uh, the, you know, the, the, the winds, that the tide is shifting, right? It's so easy just to sell this chart. I'll give you one personal little example. So, you know, earlier this year, my mom, um, you know, battled with and survived with cancer, right? And over the phone, you know, my mom's Korean. Her native language is Korean, right? The second language is English. I'm Americanized. I only speak English. So when I'm trying to explain elephant money to my mom, right, she doesn't get it. <laughs> I can't explain it in the in the depth that you know she would understand. But most recently, you know, with the birth of my child, my mom got to visit me. Right, she was here for uh, two weeks, and you know what she did understand? The chart. When I'm sitting there on the couch next to her, and I show her that, um, actually, where's that beautiful chart that uh, Stu put together as well? Um, this one, this one right here. When I show her this. You know, because she she hears what the mainstream talks about, like, oh, yeah, Bitcoin's not doing good. It's up and down. You know, she understands, oh, wow, this chart, Elephant's doing better than Bitcoin. Whoa, it's doing better than Apple. I know Apple. Google, she knows Google. You know, this really sold it for her enough to where, I mean, I was, I'm obviously always going to help my mom out, even with my elephant bags, but enough to where she handed me a $1,000 and said, can you start up an account for me? Like, you know how amazing that felt? Like, I've been trying to tell her about this stuff for years and finally just sitting with her in person, you know, and it's the first time I've seen her in a couple of years, guys. It's just crazy. But for her to say that, uh, was amazing. And this is going to help her retirement, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm good. Go ahead. A lot of people... Yeah, I just wanted to say, like, you know, and a, and a lot of people don't understand what winning championships looks like. They think that everything's a cakewalk. If it's not easy, you walk away or it's not worth it. It's not worth spending time in. But the reality is that anything worthwhile in life, you got to fight for anything worthwhile in life. There's going to be some pain associated with it. You know, your first, yeah. memory, your first, your, your first memory is painful coming out the birth canal. Your mother is in pain. You're in pain. You know, and then everything that is beautiful about life comes after that. So, like, you got to fight for what you believe in. You got to fight for the people that you care about. You got to fight for your purpose and the mission that you have, why you were put on this planet. It's not easy. Some people are used to getting shit handed to them. And other people have to fight for it. And other people have to fight for others. You know? So, That's like, great. I never give up. I never quit. I never quit when it comes to the things I believe in. You know, I understand that there will be pain. I understand that every it's not going to always be rosy, that it's not always not going to feel good. But if it's worthwhile, if, if it's whether it's, uh, 
you know, a goal that you have, whether, you know, it's people in your life, you know, you got to understand that it's not always going to be easy, but if you actually value them, if you actually care about them, you fight for them. Some people got to learn that the hard way. Some people don't have the experience in that. Some people have never done shit for anybody else in their whole entire life and had everything handed to them. But, you know, whatever. So that's where I that's come cool. from. That's right. You got to be forged through the fire. You have to be forged through the fire. Yes. Guys, I'm struggling Man. as well. Same as, as, same as, uh, um, as, as everyone here. I'm struggling with my family. I'm living on credit cards. I put all the money that I have, my kids' money, my own money, is right here in Elephant Money because I believe in BT. I believe in escape. And everything is up here, guys. All my life is in, in the line right now with Elephant Money. And I have only one question, one question for BT. This is the only thing I want to ask you, and that's why I'm asking for the microphone, man. I couldn't sleep last night. It was a hard night because I couldn't sleep uh, in my mind, uh, crossing the Dune, um, you know, the Dune graphics, where the Treasury and the LP cross. There, right there. Thank you very much. The first time when SK said that when they crossed and we went parabolic, the first one, I believe that was a coincidence. That was purely luck. Then the second time that he crossed again and SK said it, now that we're going off, this is not a coincidence. This is knowledge. So what we have here is something that is powerful beyond our imagination. Why I'm saying that? Because I want to hear this from BT. BT, do you know, you know that BTC, ETH, and all cryptos are unpredictable? Have you just create a crypto, a token, that price is predictable. Can you answer me that, please? The, the short answer is no. I did not invent a token whose price is predictable. Uh, every single token that is launched on Uniswap V2, which uses uh, the standard liquidity pool model, and is governed by the constant product formula x times y equals k they all have this price uh stability they have all have the same price function the difference is that i'm a student of business vitalik isn't a student of anything at the collegiate level he's a dropout you know he, he um that's not necessarily a bad thing but let's call a spade a spade for a second. When I first discovered all these tools, I was like, this is amazing. This is amazing. I've been doing fine. I've been doing computer science for a very long time since I was a kid. And, uh, and I've been doing FinTech for all of my professional career after I got an MIT. This money Lego is just laying there and people aren't playing with them you know, they're not playing with them. The people who are playing with them are these scammy Russians <laughs> making these projects in rug pulls and people jumping in and out of them. Uh, and, 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 and all the, and, and these sort of, you know, in the early, in the early days of, of, of rough and tumble DeFi. But that constant product formula in the liquidity pools, you know, released in, in, in V2, that set the stage for what was possible because that set the stage for the first uh, financial cooperative. So everybody who puts up liquidity in those pools, they're participating in a financial cooperative, you know, along with the people who are trading it against those liquidity pools. Right. So the problem was, so the biggest problem was, and that was a business problem, but I'm also a student of business. Yeah. So I realized that when you uh, get listed on exchanges, often what would happen, I tracked the, uh, the biggest performers in the space. What often would happen, and I, and I tracked the normal progression of most tokens, they're popular on chain. They're popular when they're on chain and in the DEXs. That's when they get the most price appreciation for the, the, the largest number of participants. 
Then that drops off and there's a blow off top. There's a blow off top when it, get, when, when it goes to Binance or all these exchanges and they get extra exposure, right? So they're getting the eyeballs and they're getting that, that off chain liquidity, but it's highly decentralized and it's speculative on an order book. The value of the token becomes not governed by the constant product formula, but governed by what the last person paid for it. This is what's true for every asset known to man. If you don't have some automated way of pricing the asset. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, you know, get rid of the middleman. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Binance. Sorry, OKX. Sorry, Coinbase. I will never list this token because when I do, that's where your profits come from. Let me tell you something else. <clears throat> Does anybody know what the balance sheet for Coinbase looks like? No. Oh, it's public. They're a public company. You should know. If you own any, I think their token, their, 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 their symbol is coin. If you own any coin, then you should know what their balance sheet looks like. That was, makes you a good investor. Do you know that Elephant Money is a better business than Coinbase right now? You know that they don't even have three hundred million dollars worth of of, of 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 net revenue on their books. Wow. Elephant Money is a bigger business than Coinbase right now, and they have all that overhead. So, BT, let me let, let me tell you one thing, man. So, you know, this is a smart contract. I believe Elephant Money is beyond a smart contract. I would like to call it hyper smart contract. It's just smart contract. It's just a smart contract. I mean, at the end of the day, this is still the Model T. But you know what? We're going to get rich off this Model T. And there's going to be other things that come after that. And this will never go away. The other thing is Model T is in a museum. This will continue to run on the Internet just like email. Clunky ass SMTP. Email, it's called email. That's like, I know it as SMTP, but mm -hmm. you no, know, simple mail transport protocol. But that's, e that's what email is. And guess what? It, it's not going anywhere. And, and we still hate it to this day. It's clunky as hell. There's way more secure systems. We use Telegram way better than email. Does way more things than email. But is email gone? That's the nature of the internet. That's the nature of finance, too. You have multiple protocols existing in the wild, interacting right. with each other, competing with each other for attention. But they all exist at the same time, from the most rudimentary to the most complex and sophisticated, all existing at the same time. And elephant money is on this continuum, but the difference is we have a store of value and we have the basic building blocks that people have been using since the seventies. So in, in sort of digital and digital finance. So that's, that's the difference. And, and, and um, so did I invent the model T of DeFi? Hell yeah. It's a vehicle and it can get you to point A to point B and get you to point A to point B in terms of your financial freedom. And there was nothing that worked as well as this before this existed. But when, when I tell you that the building box and the opportunity was there for a while, it was there for a while. And what it took was the, mil, the will and the foresight and the dedication, because this has not been an easy road, not for anyone participating in the space. But we're here now. Allow me to call this BT. Uh, if you don't mind me uh, speaking on top of what you just said right there, or really just on the back end, that that's what makes this so so powerful right now. Because the real the real question to each individual who gets exposed to Elephant as an ecosystem and just as a token is, what are you going to do? Um, about your share of ownership of something that's continuing to thrive is on the, is projected to do great things in the future is already doing great things 
Um, I know Stu came on and spoke uh, spoke about uh, Apple and SK and SK and Stu were speaking about what happens with uh, with uh, the shares that even Elon has uh, when he goes uh, in in terms of Tesla. Or, or any kind of performance that that goes on there. What 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 are you asking yourself, and what is the person asking themselves that you expose the elephant in terms of getting into the cooperative and all the different routes that there are right there? While we have already seen stress tests, not just from that initial exploit, from every angle, like BT just said, going through DeFi. If you've been in D5 for three to five plus years minimum, you've gone through multiple levels of stress tests from every angle. And now it's geo, geopolitical, geoeconomics, you name it, right? And what, what's happening because of that? What's been happening? Shoring up counterparty risk from every angle possible, you know, shoring up macro attack vectors. Everything is just tightening it up, tightening it up and, and, clinching down into an angle of perfection, but there is no perfection. Like BT said, um, it's, it's, it's a constant software tweak. It's a constant, uh, development structure. So it's a journey. It's a marathon and everyone in our community community knows the difference in the value more specifically in it being a marathon and not a sprint. And, and again, I pose that question because this is what this is what we've always been speaking of is is the authentic users, the authentic active users. And what better time right now when you can approach someone and they have something going on? You can go on TikTok and see mashups or YouTube and see mashups of TikTok where people are complaining about inflation all over the world. Um, you have people with issues maybe sitting right next to you on the train, sitting right next to you on the bus, uh, right next to you in your cubicle at work. Um, you have, like, like SK just said, you know, we are all, uh, Avengers on certain levels, you know, and you have the power to basically infect the next person to be the, the, the next Avenger, the next, um, the next, the next person with a solution for the, for someone who is in need. People are in need. This is definitely bigger than, um, breaking down stats. This is about using the tools, getting in the car and driving to the next person's house and, you know, sharing your success and, and the gears of your success with them. And by the way, nice to meet you, Phil. It's the first time I've spoken with you. That's fine, man. I can understand English. That's good. <laughs> no worry, man. You can speak as much as you want. And this is great, guys. I think so much information from all of you is just, I'm just, all ears now. I'm just quiet and, and listening and learning. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, SK. I wasn't the only one. No, no, I, I'm good. I'm just listening to you guys. Uh, yeah, Native, I always love it when you speak, man. And anyone else, please, you know, feel free. This is your AMA. This is the community. Yeah, I think, uh, guys, I'm about to uh, head out, but, um, you know, <laughs> happy to end it on what what native just laid down too because uh i think that that was good so yeah awesome hey, thank you for, uh, yeah thank you bt for uh jumping in and thank you for all the information and updates watch that video of 10 seconds what i just posted or i will send to you in dm <laughs> <laughs> what i did for uh, elephant money it's just a funny one it's just a funny yeah one. that was dope we appreciate that <laughs> Yeah, right, guys, it was good time with you. Yeah, we we always must have fun. I just want to mention earlier we spoke something for uh, with uh, for uh, positive uh, you know things in the chat. I just want to mention the Tor God ad. By the way, I, uh, I'm not sure if you can speak or not. I always listen to your positive videos, uh, like uh, what you listing. What you pin in in Elephant Money Man from that tall building over there, you know, uh, 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 that's such a great and positive things, man. We all need that. We all need that. You're welcome, man. You are welcome. Good. Uh, hey, guys, listen, it's been already hour and a half. Anybody want to ask something? Anybody want to add anything? Anybody want to say something? Feel free.
Yep. Don't be shy, anybody. Patrick Cryptozo, I see you, man. We don't get to hear from him much, but he, he's a he's a he's a he's major somewhere. influencer. Yeah. My, my my last question for you, SK, is uh, actually it's also from other people. But uh, when do you think? Two questions. When do you think uh, people asking was when it going to happen? You know, supply shock. Well, according to this chart, what you what you posting? Uh, I'm telling to everybody, it is started. Like, look the chart. Don't expect 20% percent a day, but look the chart one two percent a day. Like, or like you know, it's crazy. So when you think will be started? That's what everybody asking me. I'm, 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 my answer is also already started, but it depends what you answer. A next question: yeah. When do you think Trunk Token can get back back to a dollar? Maybe a few months next year. Like, when do you think can happen that? Uh, and that's about it. I'm no more questions. Okay. No, no, no. Those are really good questions too. So, um, really, when it comes to any kind of price predictions, uh, best not to. But just look at the past to predict what uh, what mathematically should be happening in the future. Okay. So the last time. Uh, we went parabolic here when the LPs and Bertha crossed. Um, we crested up that elbow and went vertical. And this was a 40 million market cap up to a 600 million market cap. That is a 15x in 30 days. So you can kind of use that. It's going to be a little bit longer since we're building two um, very large LPs. But um, that trajectory is is going to be the same. Um And, you know, uh, I don't know if I had to guess 12 months from today, conservatively, 5X, 10X, you know, but don't be surprised if it's more. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're already supply shocking. This is it. You're already in that. The, the, the snowball has already been pushed over the, uh, the, the, the mountaintop and rolling down that snowy mountain, right? And it's picking up size. It's picking up speed. Um, that's what's happening right now with the price. So there's that. And then your last question about trunk. Um, essentially, uh, trunk does go back to peg. Remember this. There's not a scenario where trunk does not go back to peg, but it has to happen after elephant token pops off. And uh, the math is already showing it's popping off. So remember, when it comes to the elephant treasury right here, there's inflow of money coming in with the, the ring of contracts that protect her now. Uh, money stops at the ring and then enters in slowly. And then money leaves the ring, stops, and then uh, exits slowly to buy trunk. Now, trunk, their total supply of 34 million trunk out there. So to comfortably pay that entirety and, and be able to support trunk price, we want Bertha's dollar value to be... 10 times the size of this. So what do I mean by that? So if you look right now at Bertha's value, she's at $59 million dollars right now. So 10X of 34 million is 340 million, right? So when Bertha goes from 59 million up to 340 million, now she's got a sizable enough bag to where she's going to start cutting larger checks in the background that exits through that ring of contracts, it exits and buys trunk, okay? I don't know what that background percentage is, um, but you know, it, even if it's like 1% APR coming out of Bertha, well, 1% APR of 59 million is, is not a lot, it's not moving the needle, but 1% APR of $340 million, dollars, that starts to buy up way more trunk on a daily basis. And that gets us up to peg. It's not 1% APR, by the way, I'm just using an arbitrary percentage, but that's what will happen. So this will peg, uh, I don't know, sometime before middle of next year. Uh, I think that uh, price will start going up. You'll see a period of volatility, okay? Um, people are going to try to sell their liquid trunk. They want to get out of the system, you know, let them get out of the way, that's fine. But you will have a period of volatility before Bertha just doesn't give a damn. Like she's going to outpace all that sell pressure and they will lose. They will, you know, run out of uh, powder, but Bertha's not. Bertha won't. So she's going to keep buying it through the period of volatility until this is at peg and stays at peg. Hopefully that makes sense. Brother SK, uh, questions. If you go to uh, the Dune graphics with Trunk, 
could you explain me a little bit more why it's one of the lines going down and one going up? I don't really understand that part. Could you help me out, please? Maybe. I don't really look at trunk Dune analytics. Or is it this one with trunk stampede or, or no trunk redemption? Well, there's a lot of trunk. Which one? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Point me in the right direction, brother. Uh, let's see. So it's the redemption one, yes. Um, redemption one. Okay. Okay, let me take a look at that one. So the redemption queue is on the trunk page, right? And you go up to the top, and when you look at stats, um, and no, actually redeem, you'll see that, oh, cool. Hey, look, I'm queued 331 out of 2100, so I got 1,000 BUSD coming my way at some point. But I forgot about that. That's actually kind of cool. But anyway, the, the current queue is congested. So how this works is basically um, you're able to put in cheap, undervalued trunk up to 10,000 tokens. You can put that in here. And um, when it's your turn in queue, Bertha will pay you out because there's a governance. Uh, the ring of contracts, I said, that surrounds Bertha. One of them is trunk redeem strategy. So right now there's $517 that if someone comes in and calls this contract for redeem, this will go into the pot of money to pay the redemption queue. Now, it's the same thing I just described with Trunk. Basically, uh, this is a set APR leaving Bertha. And as Bertha gets bigger in dollar value, right? And we know she's getting bigger in dollar value because of this, right? This is happening. And the bigger she gets in dollar value, the larger this number on a daily basis becomes okay and the larger this number becomes the more people get cycled through on this redemption queue so right now it says congested what happened i don't even know what the next text is going to say but maybe it says steady or maybe it says lightning speed i, I don't know warp speed <laughs> but eventually when we're firing on all cylinders and trunk is at peg this redemption queue is going to be cycling all sorts of trunk and all trunk that enters here is burned so that does help peg um, all the people who put in cheap trunk while um, yeah, while trunk is cheap, uh, they will get redeemed out dollar, dollar for dollar. So now looking at this Dune analytic, I'm wondering what, what line you're talking about. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go through this live because I, I haven't really properly studied this, but that, that concept I showed you, that's how it works. Yeah. Thank you, brother. No, no problem. Thank you so much. Can I, uh, You're very welcome. Great. And, hey, I'm glad, I'm glad you actually pointed that out because when oh, yeah, wait, someone needs to mute, it, hang on, Native. I, we can't hear you because someone else needs to mute in the chat. Oh, okay. sorry. I just wanted to ask a question. So, uh, oh, can you can you ask it after Native uh, chimes in real quick? Yep. All right. Sure. Just mute until after just Native speaks. Speak. So yeah, really quick, just uh, in terms of that redemption queue, the really cool thing to think about is if you were to imagine um, a train just getting revved up and starting and, and you're looking at those wheels, in, in essence, that is the that is our ecosystem and a lot of the different factions and, and assets of, or aspects of our ecosystem. And that queue, um, like SK just described, eventually becomes... Uh, becomes at a stable state and that steady state is more of a more of a native in-house uh, plus and that those those different those different uh armed lock it, it's a locking of arms with a lot of the contracts that we have the trumpets the the stampedes etc uh that will just automatically if you think about that train starting to speed up and rev up uh, increase uh, user productivity and actions uh, within the ecosystem as well. So everything will start to just feed on each other and oil each other up. So it's m m most of what is not necessarily uh, quick or let's say, as the screen says, congested, becomes something that is a well-oiled machine even more so than what it is right now. And that's all just based off of the user interaction and the growth of users. So, you know, that's just that 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 uh, 30,000 square foot view of how that function uh, ever uh, grows ever increasingly better. 
uh, over time as well. So I just wanted to uh, add that on top of what you were saying there. Well. No, absolutely. And guys, for those who don't know who Native Loop is, Homeboy is a legend. He's He's been rocking with BT for years and years. He's part of the core admin team. So um, I know he doesn't really introduce himself like that, but I just wanted to throw that out there because I know y'all hear him speak on like the Wednesday Twitter spaces for Elephant Money. Um, that's Native Loop right there. He's 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 dope, man. I love you, bro. Um, all right, what's that question? <laughs> uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm in a warehouse. It's uh, noisy back here. Um, I just want to say I'm new to Elephant Money. I got in through a buddy of mine uh, who's... Uh, Part of the MMKK group. Um, nice. I just want to know more about the exploit and what preventions are in place for that happening again. I mean, if somebody's already answered it or asked that question, I apologize. But uh, if you can elaborate a little more on, uh, you know, the security for the future. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a quick version. We didn't really touch on it this time because we've covered it with Crypto Phil in the past AMAs. Um, but just a quick run through. Um, basically, while we were going parabolic for 30 days and this concept of supply shock economics was proven true, um, a, a, a uh, sophisticated $261 million flash loan uh, uh, took advantage of a mint redeem vulnerability on the trunk token. Um, so it wasn't a hack. You know, it wasn't like an administratively detrimental a contract breach on Elephant or Trunk, it was just a vulnerability on the Mint Redeem. So essentially what occurred is, uh, you know, a second ago you just heard me describe there's a ring of contracts now that protect Bertha. Um, but uh, back then when, when we had the attack, there, there wasn't that ring, okay? You can directly interact with the Treasury user interaction. So that $261 million was able to come in and mint a bunch of trunk um, and then redeem it after lopsiding the pools and it cycled hundreds of times in one block and it basically extracted value from Bertha. So if you look at this chart again, um, you know, Bertha's growing in red, right? You, you see Bertha's climbing, climbing, climbing. And then when that value of her got extracted, that's why you see the gap in red right here. Does that make sense? And when that happened, we're draining the blue, the LPs, we're draining them, right? The blue's going down, 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 all the way down. And then when Bertha relinquished her tokens, because remember, she's the whale that's not supposed to dump on you. Well, she was forced to dump the token and all those tokens went back into the wild. That's why you see the blue, it jumped up on the on the chart. And so, yeah, so um, BT recognized that attack vector. He built... Uh, you know, actually, there's this one coin merge Twitter space that I did. But basically, if Bertha before had Paul Blart Mall Security as her uh, as her uh, guardian back then, now now today she's protected by SEAL Team Six <laughs> and uh, and an entire army. So um, now everything's buttoned up and watertight, and we have the same recipe uh, occurring right now. So. Now, the ring of contracts, you can't directly interact with the elephant treasury anymore, but you can interact with the ring of contracts around her. So the money, well, one, one of those rings, for example, is this BUSD treasury. Money from futures comes into the BUSD treasury, stops right here, first and foremost. Then in the background, this uh, money comes out, buys elephant token, and then stuffs it into the treasury, if that makes sense. Like... And this BUSD treasury, for example, is detailed up here in the governance. This is the ring of contracts right here. Uh, elephant buyback strategy. So this $1.44,000, this came out of that BUSD treasury, and it's sitting here. It's sitting right here, waiting for someone to hit this buyback button. A community member can hit this. And then $1.4,000 will purchase elephant token and then land into Bertha. So hopefully that makes sense. I will follow up with this question because it's, it's, it's still rumbling. Okay, so if somebody do a, a smart loan again of $261 million, if somebody can do that again, it was likely it's gonna happen again. Somebody's gonna do it again. What's gonna happen with Berta? They can try it. 
But, you know, in order for a flash loan to be successful, they have to be able to do it in one block and they have to be able to pay off their $261 million, right? If they don't do it fast enough, they can't pay off the flash loan. That's why it's called a flash loan. Um, if someone put in $261 million today, it would actually get trapped in that ring of contract. It, if they put it into futures, it would get trapped right here in the BUSD treasury. If they put it into the you know, the token, you know, that's all fine and well, but, you know, Bertha got a a, a purchase tax, so she's going to get her cut of that $261 million. She's going to lock it up. And then if they try to sell that elephant token, well, they're paying 10% on the way out too. So um, they won't have enough to pay off their $261 million flash loan, and they'll be, you know, on the hook for that. So if they tried it again, basically, it would get trapped in the ring of contracts, and then it's our money. And that's our value capture, and we thank them. SK, and, and that's 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 the beauty of lessons learned learned from stress tests. So, um, to to the speaker, that's exactly uh, what one of the aspects of things that were that were implemented after the lessons learned from that specific stress test. Yes. All right, so I think that was great explanation. I think uh, you did explain before after the first exploit was happening is uh, you, there are so many layers of protection, you know, so, so many like, you know, sword and, 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 and all that, uh, you know, all that layer. So nobody can get in, you know, you want to get in, you want to try, go ahead. Simple like that. Um, all right, so that was great, great question and great explanation, SK. Yeah. Uh, um, hey Probably guys, one I, last. Oh yeah, go ahead. Do you sorry. have to go? Do you have to go, Phil? Because we I didn't touch 10, on NFTs. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I have ten more minutes. Oh, ten more minutes. Perfect, guys. All right. So anyone who's new, um, you know, we already have the ROI DAP uh, that's covered in a previous AMA. Everything we talked about, even even Trunk. Actually, we did a fantastic AMA on Trunk exclusively. And it covers Trumpet and farms and all that. So check out Crypto Phil's video on that a couple months back. But the only thing that hasn't been covered yet that um, he can include on his title for this posting will be the unlimited NFTs. Okay, so these NFTs um, are coming out of Bertha. And actually, it's kind of a perfect segue. Remember how we talked about um, there's a percentage of money coming out of Bertha? that um, pays for various parts of the ecosystem. Well, now one of those is actually the NFTs. So 1% APR, 1% APR comes out of these trillions of tokens that Bertha has, and it pays into this um, NFT reward pool, okay? So how that happens, this APR, you get it from dividing um, Bertha's 1% APR, and then it's divvied out amongst these amount of staked NFTs, okay? And currently, you see it's a 27% APR. But what's really cool is, you know, when I explain these NFTs, there's an unlimited amount of NFTs. So follow me. There's an unlimited amount of them. But every 10,000 NFTs that are minted, the price doubles. So we've already gone through the first 10,000 mints and they were one BNB each on the NFTs. Now we're in round two. So the price doubled to two BNB. After we go through these next 10,000, which you know right now, current supply, only 173 NFTs have been purchased in round two. But when this total supply jumps up to 20,000, right? That means round two is over. What does that mean for the price? It doubles. It goes to 4 BNB, then 8 BNB. The next round, 16, 32, 64, 128 BNB per NFT. So why is that exciting, though? Now, why are you early on this? Because when it comes to this uh, NFT staking APR, right now, 27% may not sound like a lot, but this was as low as 22% you know, a couple weeks ago. And that it jumped up. Why? Because Bertha's 1% APR always go up. Remember, CryptoSuce chart right here. This yellow, this is the token count of Bertha. What is it doing? It always go up, 
right? So if Bertha's token count always go up, that means that 1% APR always gets bigger all of the time. That's how it's engineered. But you know what doesn't always get bigger? The NFT amounts that are staked, right? Right now we have almost 10,000 people that have staked their NFTs. What happens when we go to round after round after round and price doubles and doubles and doubles? What happens when each NFT is 64 BNB a pop or 128 BNB a pop? Depending on what BNB price is, if it's $1,000 per BNB and one NFT is 128 BNB, that's $128,000 someone has to pay for one NFT. So your NFT sales are going to slow down, okay? Bertha's APR is going to keep going up. That 1% is just in perpetuity, guys. But the NFT sales will eventually slow down, meaning the amount of money being divvied out across these staked NFTs is going to stagnate. When this number stagnates and Bertha keeps going up, that means this APR keeps going up. What happens when each NFT is paying out 100% APR? or anything higher, 150% APR, because Bertha keeps climbing. So that's why these are very bullish, and you're very early on these, because you could also think of this like real estate. Maybe you bought a lot of land. Uh, you bought a plot in um, New York City two decades ago, right? The NFT is like the plot of land that you just purchased. Over time, you want your resale value of your lot to go up, right? And what's real estate doing? It's going up. So your NFT price is going up. And then also on your plot of land, you built some apartments and you're collecting rent. So these NFTs, they actually reward you an elephant token. That's your rent that you're collecting. So if I look at my collection right here, um, you'll actually see total, all in all, you know, I put in 30 BNB. You know, that was only... Uh, $6,500. Now it's doubled. Now I have $13,000 worth of NFTs because my resale value just doubled. My lot of land in New York City just doubled. But then look at the rent I'm collecting. You see this, Phil? Look, I've collected 788 million tokens valued at $273. But you know what's cool? This is as elephant token. This, we already learned today, is an appreciating asset. So this at a 10x What's 10 times $273? That's 2,700, isn't it? What happens yeah. at a 100X? You know, so you're, you're getting all of this appreciating asset reward and not only on a daily basis am I collecting, like, look, right here available, I've collected another $50 worth of elephant token that if I claim it out, it'll, it'll pull up in my total rewards. Actually, I think, I think this goes to there when I claim it out. But yeah, this is all going to 10x and 20x along with the elephant token. So these are amazing, um, amazingly undervalued. And over time, they're going to pay you a lot of elephant token. Hopefully that made sense. Um, somebody's unmuted. I think it's just do it. No, Just do it. You have to mute your mic. There we go. Uh, yeah, that that was great. And I'm sad I only get one NFT because different reasons. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I don't even mention. Uh, I was ready to buy. And then in three days, 3,000 were sold, 2,000, whatever. And I said, shit, I missed them. Yeah. <laughs> they went fast, bro. It was a FOMO effect for sure. Yeah. But uh, uh, trust me, 2 BNB is still cheap. Yeah, uh, it, I, let me go to my trip. <laughs> I, I like all my money you know go what, there. You know, you know what, yeah, Phil, though? Yeah, go you, you actually, well, like SK just said, 2 BNB is still still cheap. But also, if you look at it from um, a DCA standpoint, um, the NFTs is really, it really truly is an easy button. Not only for active users that are currently already in the system, but also for onboarding tools. Um, we at our core obviously sell yield. Um, we deliver yield. That's what our products do. This is the easy button to be able to share the gift of generating yield in a DCA fashion as well. So that person who has challenges, onboarding challenges, and, you know, wants to dip their toe in and whatnot can easily 
uh, get an get a get an NFT and get exposure, and not just one time exposure, but on a continual basis. So even in a situation where oh, you know, I, I dipped my toe in and I got one NFT, um, you're still continually getting um, getting that those available uh, divs in Elephant, right? Which is obviously um, a parabolic nature. So you know, it's it's a it's a really good way to be able to. Uh, look at it from a DCA standpoint. Like I'm going to get a few NFTs and I know that that's constantly climbing and that's compounding upon itself as well. So, you know, it's really like, it's no rush, but obviously the opportunity cost is there, um, you know, for for the front end and also the back end. And, and, and when I say back end, I mean the marketplace that you can see right there on screen with SK. That marketplace, you can always get at this price point, 1.8 BNB. Uh, as opposed to uh, the, the the mint price, like he was just expressing earlier, so there will always be people who got in at an earlier at an earlier time frame who want to uh, basically, uh, you know, maybe liquidate an NFT for for you know they want to toss it in some futures or whatever the case may be. Because obviously we're we 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 rely on every individual to be able to lean on their own strategies and whatnot. Because um, everybody else, everybody has their own specific needs. But uh, but, you know, you're able to capitalize on on that opportunity there um, and, you know, choose whatever color you like, whatever rarities you like, whatever. Go ahead and stake that and continue to march on um, at, at always a fraction of the, the mint price right there. And that's a good way to look at it in terms of just being able to DCA and buy a little elephant, you know, stake a little NFTs, you know, constantly get exposure to to, to the token. And not have that train run away from you, you know, because that is a crazy feeling to feel like that train is running away from you. And I know a lot of people do do tend to feel that way sometimes, but it's still early. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, it, yep. I, I should get uh, maybe a couple of more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Aim for 10 non-financial advice, but 10 is a good number. Anyway, okay, so I I'm good. I don't think I have anything else for you, brother. I think we should wrap up because I can see my wife looking at me very uh, salty. Is that you call it? Oh, uh, you get in the eye. You get in the eye. <laughs> yeah, I got to um, run to the meeting myself. It was a yeah. pleasure chatting with you, brother. SK, it's always great talking with you, man. And the herd, we're always here representing. I love all y'all. Yes, guys, again. Yeah. You, thank you so much for all of you. It's been, again, thank you for everybody who joined BTSK Native. Uh, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, I just wish you a wonderful day, wonderful night, wherever you are. And also, watch some of my video. It's called More You Give, More You Receive. It's, it's, it's I'm making different out there. Go and watch and maybe copy-paste in your life will be mean a lot for me and you. Absolutely. And, and, and thank you, Crypto Phil. Also, everyone, make sure you use Crypto Phil's uh, wallet address. If you're watching this YouTube video and you're brand new to Elephant Money, find his referral link so you can buy that token at a 1.5% discount. You will pay 8.5% tax instead of 10%. And all those proceeds go to helping your, 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 your boy, Crypto Phil, and his, his mission to, to save the world and his charitable events, man. So thank you for doing what you do, brother. Thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, man, stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, I'll shut down now and all the best and God bless. Goodbye. Goodbye.